And what's what's the the uh, respect and sort of almost adoration that people have for the knee? Can you explain why that is? Uh, okay, so there's different versions of neves, and this is of the production neves. This is the last of the handmade neves. Then after this console, they, you know, w w the company changed and went into a different sort of format. And like the neve at the CBC, right? I think it's an Amac neve. Is a different version. But this, these, this is hand built and, uh, and it's transformer based and actually transistor based too. So it just, it, there's something about the sound of the, the, this is considered a classic Neve and this is, would be the, the last of the classic Neves or the tail end of it anyway. Right. Yeah. And we spoke, we spoke about uh, Dave Grohl's documentary yeah. from Sound City. And he said that it's, it's the, another characteristic is it's what you see is what you get in terms of the purity of the sound. That's right, yeah. And so that's, you find that it's, it is indeed different with other boards? Oh, big time. I mean, there's no, actually, t t uh, to me anyway, from a tracking perspective, there's no comparison. Uh, I, th I remember in d that, that movie, that his movie, uh, you know, he keeps talking about how the center of, of the studio was the console, and it really is. And so today with Pro Tools and stuff and the way things are now, you almost say the center of your studio is your Pro Tools unit, but when you have a console like this, yeah. the center of the studio is the console. I mean, it's big, it's heavy, it's got a lot of iron, like transformers in it that are uh, giving you the sweet sounds and, um, and it's quite versatile, so you can track a lot of people and it's just meant, it's meant for recording a bunch of people really well. And making sure they sound really good, or at least it's true to the, the sound coming off the floor. Uh, Neve has a reputation of being kind of two consoles that tube amps, like Fender or whatever, the two old tube amps and right. stuff have to guitar players and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, at, yeah, actually I started electronics, I really started in a way dealing with tube stuff because I really liked how good they sounded because they sounded good, whatever, whatever I sent through. In fact, I built some compressors and stuff for the studio. But then also um, how simple they are. Like, I have a bit of an electronics background, so I was able to figure out how they worked. And okay, that makes So when it came to this console, and I've worked on other consoles that are a little more complicated or, or like harder to figure out. I shouldn't say this isn't complicated, because it is. But when you get into it and when you start to understand it, you start to realize how simple and or well laid out and rational and logical it is right and i think that's part of it too that they they just design they were designed fairly they were designed with good quality d designs in the first part i right. guess and then also simply laid out in a way that makes sense so when you go to fix things or it just makes sense once you get a feel for it eh? if you can get a bunch of guys or people sorry in in the room and a bunch of good musicians and recording, and you get as much as possible off the floor. In effect, it's also cheaper because you're not spending a bunch of time sitting in a studio doing overdubs. When Hoke and I decided to make the studio work, uh, it was just paramount to me that we had a really good console because the center of a studio is the console. I mean, this, the sound of the main room is really important, but in the end, the brains of the, is, it's the console, and you can plug a tape or Pro Tools or whatever you want into it, and, and that's fine. But it's like the brain is right there, or, or the, it's, the vibe is right there coming out of the console. And, and so you just make that as good as possible and then and make, make sure that that makes sense. And then yeah. the music that comes from that into the I don't know, it's kind of hard to describe. But see, this is it. It's like it's a musical instrument on its own. So when you listen to a nice guitar, and if I'm playing a guitar that's really nice sounding, you go, wow, that sounds beautiful or a piano like a nice Steinway, Steinway or Yamaha that sounds particularly nice and you're playing it going and you can feel it vibrating through your fingers and stuff and it just sounds really nice. You can get in technically into it and there will be technical reasons as there are with this console but um, in the end it's just kind of, it's, you step back from all the technical and just and listen to what's coming out of the speakers and is that reflecting what the musicians and the artists are putting down on the floor. That's all that matters. It, is it coming, is the music being, is what they're capturing, what they're doing out there, is it being coming back to you and have the right vibe and the same vibe and the sound? And when I, you know, it's funny, like l recently I've managed to, this console is now operating, it 
it's, it's kind of in pieces, but it is running and it's running quite well, and um, or on the way to running well. Um, <laughs> But you know, you know I, I'll push it. You know, I'll throw throw some signal in there and some music, and and ah, oh, it is so beautiful. Like, and you can get, you can, you know, the, like before when we were talking, when you you checked, you first checked to make sure if you could lean on it, and then you leaned on the console or whatever, like which is what you do with all these consoles these days, right? Where this one, you don't really have to worry about. Beast. You just yeah. plant <laughs> yourself on it, right? But it's like it's got all that mass, and when you when you're cranking something through it, you can feel it. You can. You got your hands on. You can feel it vibrating, not shaking, but just almost humming to the music. Right? It's like it's like when you play a piano and you push put your hand on the piano, and the piano sort of the the it's humming to the music. Yeah, right? Yeah, it's the, you're it's, feeling the, those vibrations. That's right. It's all the same stuff, man. Once we get it up and running, we will, uh, and we're we're going to basically build a control room in here, like all the external gear and patch bays and all that kind of stuff. And then what will happen is we will take that to uh, Hoke will be buying and building, hopefully in this uh, similar area, and uh, or the same area. And then we will build a studio. And so when I everything that I do on this board, it, the back of my mind is: is does this my decisions are? Does this make sense for the music? It's not whether it's the most like some tech reason of doing it. I do it. I go: does this make sense to do this modification or change this back to the way it used to be or fix this is does this if I ever start feeling lazy about something no that'll affect the music in the end no I got to keep yeah it's all about the music so I'm teching this from a musician's point of view yeah